Here is Dr. Bremer tweeting out, extraordinary to see so many seats lost by a president presiding over such a strong economy that he's partially responsible for. Ian Bremer uh, joins us on this post-election morning. Dr. Bremer, wonderful to have you with us today. What is so interesting is the great divide, the cultural divide, and some would say the economic inequalities of this nation. Where will we be in two years? more divided than we are right now. Uh, the fact that we are this divided with an economy that is doing this well, with extremely low unemployment, um, with a tax break and benefit that has made most Americans more optimistic about the economy than they were two years ago when Trump first became president, uh, implies he should be doing a lot better than low 40s uh, in, his, in his approval. And of course, he's massively divisive. And that's a reason why he decided to go on immigration and the caravan and race uh, for his uh, you know, election bid for the midterms, as opposed to running on a solid economy. And when the economy turns downward, as it almost certainly will when we're heading towards the 2020 race, um, you know, you have to ask yourself, what is that campaign cycle going to be like? It's clearly going to be much more challenging domestically for the U.S. than what we've just experienced. Ian, you write a morning memo that is global in nature, the reaction and news of nation to nation and nation. How will these nations react to the new America, or is it business as usual for our foreign policy? Well, it's business as usual in terms of the Democrats taking the House. Uh, I don't think that matters much uh, for uh, people from around the world. Um, what matters more is uh, what you see in terms of policy from Trump on foreign issues. And, you know, he has been able to do that fairly independently of the foreign policy elite. Let's be clear, Tom, that um, whether you're Republican or Democrat, the foreign policy elite does not like Trump, right? Uh, there are a lot of Republicans that do. There are a lot of people in the country that do, but not the foreign policy elite. He's been going after the globalists, and that's true whether you talk about um, him pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord or pulling out of TPP or pulling out of the Iranian nuclear deal or changing the embassy in Jerusalem, you know, and, and running up to the G20 meeting uh, in Argentina at the end of this month, which will by far be the most important um, of the international meetings Trump has had since he's become president because it's all about U.S. and China and trade and how President Xi and President right. Trump look at each other. I don't think the Democratic win in the House and the pickup of Republican seats in Senate matters very much for that. All right. So you don't think, and that was my question, you don't think this would embolden President Trump to be more aggressive with China? You know, I, I think not. Um, I, I, frankly, I think that Trump the, the, is this. This meeting is being set up to go relatively well, at least tactically in the near term. You, know, you get the two adults in the room, and only they can show that they can make some meaningful progress. They come up with some kind of framework for then the teams to start working, and they probably put some suspension on further escalation of tariffs for a period of time. I think that's the most likely outcome, and I don't think um, that the election electoral um, results in the United States will impact that. I do think that once you have uh, the Democrats seated in the House and you start seeing major investigations going down against Trump and they start, you know, calling for his taxes um, to be uh, to be reviewed and they start looking into his family business and the rest, then you'll start right. to see a more erratic Trump. I think when the U.S. economy starts turning downward, then and you'll see a more erratic Trump. But I, I don't see that in the run-up to this meeting at the end of November. No, I don't. Yeah, Ian, what does it mean for um, U.S. GDP? We saw a deeply divided nation. Again, we saw this divide that we had seen in the presidential election between urban and rural votes. What does it tell you about the strength of the U.S. overall? 
I don't think it tells you much short term about the strength of the U.S. economy. Certainly, all the CEOs I've met with here at the New Economy Forum in the last couple of days uh, feel almost as good about the U.S. economy as they did uh, a year ago. Um, you know, 3.7 percent global growth, a uh, growth with a three handle in the United States. I don't think the economists are comfortable with where growth is right now. Um, I think they feel that the fiscal right. juicing in the United right. States with low unemployment. Yeah. It's dangerous.